You've heard this song, right? Yeah. I mean, but does that sound familiar? Sorry, I'm actually thinking of this one. I can keep this bit going for a long time, but I'll just cut to the chase and tell you each of these songs, Coy Ray, Puffy, Ice Cube, they all sample one of the most important songs in music history. And today we're talking all about the creation of the original song, The Message by Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five, why it's so important to music history, breaking down the samples. Wait, there aren't samples in the song, are there? I, I mean, kind of? And once we've unraveled the whole thing, I'll create a mashup moving through music history using not only the songs that sampled the message, but the songs that the message will uh, sort of pre-sample. First, let's talk about why the message is such a big deal in music history. The start of the music that we now know as hip hop is debated by some, but largely credited to a party thrown by DJ Cool Herc on August 12th, 1973. The unique thing about this is the DJ. He's got two copies of the same record. He's playing the most exciting part of the song, the drum break, over here. And then he plays it over here and rewinds it over here, transfers it over here with a crossfader, right? Keeps this looping back and forth. Other DJs like Grandmaster Flash continue to develop this, and we get things like the crayon technique, scratching, etc. At this point, though, it's all about the DJ. The master of ceremonies, the MC, is there. He's hyping the crowd up, talking about what a great party it is, and he starts to rhyme. But it's all relatively simple stuff. Simple rhymes about partying or how good you are at rhyming. You've probably seen this clip of Hannibal Burris on T Pain's podcast. Hip hop, it started out in the park. <laughs> Start break dancing. We hanging out with our friends, shaking hands. We do the dance. Go to the ball and right. shoot some hoop. Okay. Do 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's easy to look back 50 years later at the roots of a genre that took over the world and laugh, but I mean, I mean, yeah, that's hilarious. But the message isn't just an early hip hop hit. It's particularly notable for two big reasons, the music and the lyrics. A lot of early hip hop is built on samples from funk and disco, which has a faster tempo. Rapper's Delight is about 112, whereas The Breaks is 113. Planet Rock, 127. Even if they're not sampling funk or soul directly, that's the general tempo range. And once you get to the late 80s and into the 90s, a lot of hip hop is somewhere in the 92 to 98 BPM range, but the message sits right at 101 BPM. It's a lot slower than the party music that hip hop was known for, and lyrically, it's not a party song at all. It's social commentary on inner city life with Reaganomics beginning, the crack epidemic beginning, and the song ends with a skit where they get arrested. In fact, it was so different from other hip hop songs at the time that no one at Sugar Hill Records wanted to record it. The label had groups like the Sugar Hill Gang and Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five, and as Melly Mel explains, Now we had a song out at that time, so Sugar Hill Gang was supposed to do the message, but they didn't like the song. So, no, so she had a song that basically nobody wanted to do. I did the song because like I said, she was so fixated on doing the song that I knew the song was gonna get done anyway. So it might as well just go for the ride and you know, and do the song. So they they went in the studio, hung jigs, put the track together, you know, uh, do booty play percussions. It took three days to mix the song. Like I said, I didn't think the record was going to do anything. It, it didn't resonate nothing that was going on in, in the basic hip hop world. Here's the craziest thing about this. The song is credited to Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five, but Melly Mel was the only member of the group who's rapping on this, taking three of the five verses. And Duke Booty, who, by the way, is in my list of top five names I've ever heard, has the other two. Only one member of the Furious Five is actually on this. Grandmaster Flash wasn't even involved at all. No disrespect to Flash whatsoever. The man is a legend, and even Melly Mel reluctantly agreed to be a part of it, only because it was the next song coming out from Sugar Hill Records. This just goes to show you how no one thought the song would be much of anything. No one except Sylvia Robinson. Melly Mel says she's the only one that believed in the song and she played a similar role to James Brown or George Clinton. She knew what she wanted and could get that out of the band. 
Speaking of, let's talk about sampling, or rather pre-sampling. Grandmaster Flash is a pioneer of DJing with turntables, looping great drum breaks, and helping develop the method we talked about a minute ago. But when it came to the Sugar Hill label, they took a different approach. As guitarist Skip McDonald explained, the usual Sugar Hill method was they'd go out nights to discos to see what people were dancing to, then take pieces from different records, isolate one portion, and use that as a springboard for the rappers. Sylvia would be instigator. Rapper's Delight is the classic example, a direct take from Sheik's Good Times. It was like pre-sampling. We'd learn the groove and physically play it. But the message was different. That music was Ed Fletcher. The earliest version of the message was recorded with a more African percussion feel after Ed Fletcher, AKA Duke Booty, AKA just moved into my top three best names, came up with a groove by banging on a water bottle. Like, I don't know, I guess something like... This version didn't feel quite right, so they took inspiration from three big sources for the production of this song. Zap had just done more bounce to the ounce. I loved that, and Tom Tom Club's Genius of Love. Also, we'd been listening a lot to Brian Eno and David Byrne's My Life in the Bush of Ghosts. Musically, the message is kind of a combination of those. Let's take a listen to each of these songs and see if we can spot the inspiration. Here's Zap. Now, if we isolate the bass and guitar, that sounds an awful lot like this. That synth bass, that funky guitar. You're hearing it, yeah? Ooh, let me isolate the bass and guitar from that and use that later. Here's Genius of Love. I mean, you know what the other sample is. This is Fantasy by Mariah Carey. And Grandmaster Flash sampled this on a different song. But if we isolate just the guitar on here, that's also sounding a whole lot like this. That funky, staccato, kind of percussive guitar. Oh, I could pull the drums and guitar from that for... Here's the song Regiment off that Brian Eno and David Byrne album. They specifically liked the trance-like quality of it, and if you isolate just some of the electronic stuff, this is what they really loved. And you can hear that. Some of that electronic-y, synthy stuff play out in the message. I'm gonna save some of that electronic stuff for later too. Jigs Chase was also involved in the production of this song and though uncredited, legendary bassist Doug Wimbish says he played bass and came up with the melody line. This song was a huge hit and influenced the hip hop that would come after it in multiple ways. For one, it pushed the MC to the forefront. Their rhymes and the message behind those rhymes were now the focus. It's not just about party raps anymore, though there's plenty of those still. The message paved the way for artists like KRS-One, Public Enemy, and NWA. For another, Melly Mel says this was such a huge hit because it was so different from all the other hip hop out at the time. So if you're someone who doesn't like the genre or thinks you don't like it, this is a completely different sound, style, and message that can get you liking a hip hop song in a different way. This song would plant the seed that would eventually disband Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five. I mean, it's a massive hit with Flash's name on it and only one group member's involved. But the song's influence has continued on even to today in 2023, 41 years later. Because remember the songs I played at the beginning? Ice Cube sampled the message in 1993 for the song Check Yourself. Diddy, then Puffy, sampled this song with Mace for Can't Nobody Hold Me Down in 1996 and most recently, Coyle Ray sampled the message on her song, Players. By sampling this song, Coyle Ray is taking part in hip hop history, not only directly through the message, but through the other songs that have sampled it before her. Coyle Ray is throwing in other references to classic hip hop songs as well. For instance, here's the chorus line, Pitch Down. And that's not the only reference to the next episode. I just wanna have a good night. Hold up. Hold up. There's even a Biggie reference in there. Each new song that samples the message adds additional production to make the sound match for its time, but I wonder, what if we take those isolated elements that inspired the original, the zap, bass, and guitar, the genius of love, drums, and guitar, the Brian Eno and David Byrne synths, and combined those with every iteration of the message we've mentioned? I'm just trying to make my man proud, the man with the name that is now at the very top of my list, Duke Booty. I mean, how can you top that?
This up a notch, you know what I mean? This one have a good night. Hold up, don't know that no. If you go through, you better let him go. You can have anybody, any money, no. Only you a boss, you could do what you want. The message doesn't have any direct samples itself, but by 1986, sampling was booming, and producers were looking for great drum breaks to build hip hop songs with. That's when James Brown, I mean, essentially incepted hip hop by serving up one of the greatest drum breaks in music history on a silver platter. But for that whole story, you gotta watch this video. <laughs> 